No matter where a bye week falls during the season, it is vital for a program to take full advantage of it. For the Spartans, that entails a few things. The players must take the time to learn and grow as they rest and recover. And coaches must not only do the same, but also hit the recruiting trail as they work to better the program for the years to come. You know, a lot of ways bye weeks are uh, just as busy as um, the week of the game. You know, you uh, have a chance to go out and recruiting. You take a good look at recruiting right now. You also have a chance to, um, to get a little bit of a jump start on your next opponent or to give your players rest a little bit, but you also want to practice them some. Well, I think, first of all, it's, it's good for our players to be able to have a chance to uh, uh, recover physically. Um, for coaches, uh, it's an opportunity for us to get out on the road and recruit for a couple days. You know, there's a ton of things going on, so it's really never a vacation, you know. I uh, haven't been home for dinner one night this week. Personally, I was uh, in three different states on three days uh, this last week. Uh, first and foremost, trying to see our 2015 guys that are committed. And then at the same time, we're also looking ahead to 2016 guys. It's a busy week. Uh, there's, there's no question about that. But at the same time, you try and find a little bit of time for yourself as well, because I think it's very important that you stay fresh. Although Michigan State's first bye week comes earlier this year, with two games under their belt, the Spartans need to use this time to reflect on those first two games. I think we came out and competed. Uh, you know, when you look at the first game, we didn't come out flat and look towards the second game. When you look at the second game, uh, you know, we sort of fought back from a deficit and, uh, you know, took, I thought, a pretty significant lead when you look at, at Oregon and, um, you know, the caliber football team that they had. But, uh, you know, you have to finish, so. Um, but uh, I do think that we came out prepared to play. Um, why we didn't finish or why we didn't win the football game is um, it usually comes down to as elementary mistakes sometimes, whether it's um, a play on the ball or whether it's being in the right gap or catching the football or something of that nature. But uh, things I think that we can control, even though I think we were playing a very good football team, and you want to credit uh, Oregon and, and respect them for what they were able to do. But I do think we had that chance to win the football game. With a long season ahead, the Spartans will look to improve as they move through the remainder of the schedule. My, my feelings, uh, really, you just need to continue to try and regroup, refocus, um, play with constant effort on every single play, which is difficult to do, easy to say, difficult to do, especially in the, in the midst of everything else that's going on around you, uh, to be able to keep your wits and continue to play hard. Sometimes it's a little tougher than you would say. Um, but. Um, and then uh, do the things that we do well. The things that we know how to do, we need to do those things well and make people adjust to us. And I think uh, in the Oregon game, we maybe started second guessing ourselves a little bit in that late in the third and the fourth quarter. I think we, uh, we lost our way a little bit, lost our confidence. And uh, I don't think we lost that for a, for a full season. And there's no question about that. But I think when push comes to shove, in that game in the fourth quarter, we didn't push back hard enough. Uh, whether you're coaching, whether you're playing, uh, whatever the case, you know, it's, we're all together on this, but you know, collectively, I think that's what you've got to look at because some of the things that happened, um, we could control. And that's the thing that I guess is so, um, that's the thing that disappoints you because when you go so hard and you try and get to that point where you have a chance to win um, and things are in your control, that's one thing. When it's out of your control, that's another. Welcome to this very special occasion, the dedication of the North End Zone expansion at Michigan State University. I just want to thank everybody uh, for all your contributions. As you know, the last locker room wasn't half of <laughs> what we got now. Uh, so yeah, I really just want to thank you. Uh, it's not only does a lot for me, who's somebody who's about to leave, but for a lot of players who's coming after us. Uh, it does big for recruiting, uh, and a lot of guys uh, look at a facility like this, and they look at other facilities around the nation, and they don't compare to this. Uh, and it's not only the facility, but the type of coaches that we have and the type of people that support us. And uh, on behalf of the football team, I just want to thank everybody. As Michigan State continues to invest in its student athletes and facilities, the North End Zone officially opened on August 25th. The 50,000 square foot, $24.5 million renovation transformed the historic North End Zone 
into one of the most premier facilities in college athletics. The vision really started with the locker room and it was going back in years, back to the 60s, where you had football teams that were much smaller in size and each individual was much smaller in stature. And you, yet they were dressing in the, in the same very confined locker room area. What we took from that was how can we have a positive impact in so many different areas related to Spartan football. From a locker room standpoint, I would say it's one of the best in the country right now. So I think, you know, from, that, from the dynamics that it creates for us, it takes you to a whole new level. It allows you to have a great vision about this place because um, you can do so many different things in there. Really, you can be as innovative as you, as you want to be. So as you walk through the facility, you see amenities for the media. You see a facility that can be used 300 plus days out of the year that kind of connects with the, the uh, old historical part of campus in a positive way in the engagement center. A little bit of everybody uh, has benefited from this and that was the vision that sort of came from uh, the, the, the deep, deep need to really improve our home locker room. Uh, but it also is a way that we can continue to, to recruit the best talent because whether you're in chemistry or physics or art or English, we want to recruit the best talent to Michigan State University. People who embrace our role in the world, who embrace our values and really want to be Spartans. And the North End Zone pro uh, project is going to help that uh, be a little bit easier uh, for us to recruit in a, in a tough world. What we try to do with any project is maximize the effectiveness of the resources that were provided to build it. Uh, and with that, uh, I take great responsibility, as we all do, that the buildings have to meld into the fabric of campus. No project defined that more than the North End Zone project. It's not simply about a shiny thing. It's just what the shiny thing does for people. We want a place where fans feel really connected to the university, where we can recruit the best talent, and where we can also present an image for the university that's first class. Yeah, I think as you look at our facilities across Michigan State's athletic complex and you see Old College Field, you kind of walk over here and you see the names, uh, Demmer and Magic, kind of the two that, that hit you as you walk in, but countless names inside. Without them, this wouldn't happen. They're all part of the process. And uh, if we're going to ask people for money, we have to show them that we're good stewards of that money. All those people that gave us money have a great deal of pride in this institution. As you go through and you see the different names, they're iconic uh, in Spartan lore, uh, but also great, great friends to the program today. That's what I'm most, most proud of, that we've benefited so many people, and you don't really get a chance to do that very often. Of all the things, that's probably what, what I'm most excited about. After returning much of their personnel from the previous season, the Spartan offense entered the 2014 campaign with high expectations. Well, I mean, obviously we came into the season with high expectations for, for us offensively, and I think, uh, you know, we started off real well. I think uh, uh, we moved the ball uh, very good through our first couple of games. Obviously we hit a little bit of a, a stumbling block the second half of the Oregon game, but I think overall I think we're in pretty good uh, shape. I think we're about where I thought we would be. Uh, I think probably the, the one thing that uh, we need to improve on here as we look into uh, an open week and starting to get ready for Eastern Michigan is, is improvement in our run game. Uh, you know, I think our offensive line is, is a very good offensive line, but I don't think it showed through our run game. I think we got to improve there. I think, uh, uh, you know, again, I think that's a big part of who we are at Michigan State is our run game. And uh, although we've been okay, it's probably a little bit short of where we believe we should be. So that's something that we want to look forward to here in this next uh, 10, 12 days, getting ready for, uh, for Eastern Michigan. Uh, as far as things we're happy with, I think our, our past game has been good. Um, Although, uh, you know, we're a little bit inconsistent in the second half against Oregon, but uh, feel happy with where we're at right there. Goal line, catch made, Tony Lippett, touchdown, MSU. Despite the outcome, the Spartans must be able to learn and grow from their experience at Autzen Stadium. I think, you, you know, when you play a game like that, I think it's important you take something out of it. And I think, uh, you know, the second half, uh, towards the end of the third quarter, we had opportunities to maybe maybe not put the game away, but certainly uh, take a little bit more of a commanding lead. 
and uh, we went uh, two straight series, three and outs. I mean, we missed the fourth down in that next series, and uh, I think what we got to take away from that is, hey, when you get the opportunity to, to really take control, to maybe put a team away, uh, we got to understand that that opportunity is there and take advantage of it. And I think if we're able to do that, that can help us down the road. As the Spartans enter the long haul of their remaining schedule, the offense looks to continually improve and mold it to one of the elite threats in the Big Ten and in the country. Well, I think uh, we're looking for, we're hoping to be a, a consistent offense, you know, where we weren't the end of the, uh, uh, the Oregon game. We want to be a, an offense that's going to be consistent from the first quarter all the way through uh, quarter number four. And uh, I think that just comes down, down to that execution. But certainly we, we hope to be a little bit uh, uh, of what we were that first game. We hope to be explosive and an exciting offense. But at the same time, we're never going to lose track of, of who we are. And that is uh, uh, you know, Michigan State uh, pound green pound and uh, run the football. But uh, you know, again, we got those explosive guys on the outside. You got to spread around. So that's a good problem to have. And it's, it's fun to, to be able to dial up some plays in this offense right now because, you know, whatever you dial up, uh, I feel like there's always a chance of something good happening. Bikes his way to the left pylon, into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Connor Cook to Tony Lippett one more time. With only two games under their belt and many new faces on the defense this season, the Michigan State defense is still learning and growing. You know, this, this year's defense so far, you know, it's so hard to tell right now. It's still early. You played, you know, Jacksonville State early, I and mean, then you played, you know, a, a great football team in Oregon, and you, you played a full game and didn't play a full game like you'd want to. You felt like you played more th two and a half quarters. You still need to f find out more about these guys, but, you know, they work their tail off every day in practice. I think we got uh, good enough athletes on defense to, to, to win football games, and um, I think the, the rest of the season is going to tell a lot. Football games are won in the trenches, and right now, the defensive line is leading this defensive unit. You know, so far with you know with two games in the defensive line, you know Marcus Rush has been um, just like he has been for the last three years, a very very solid football player. Uh, he, he's really 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 played as good as anybody on the front four has played. Joel's playing well. Schleek's playing okay. Uh, I think he's still got more football in him. And uh, you know, and LT's been up and down, but uh, you know he's playing his first year. This is his first season really playing football and being a, a major contributor. So you know we still got a ways to go up there, but uh, you know very very happy with Marcus Rush. Oh, right here they come, and down he goes. Uh, linebacker wise, you know, pretty happy with Tuan Jones right now. You know he's played solid in there. We're happy with where he is after two games and and, and what we've done there. Ed Davis again has done some really good things in there. And, um, and then Mylon Hicks and Darren Harris are fighting it out there to see who's going to get some star reps, and both of them played well, and, 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 and we got Chris Fry waiting right there. Um, the other guy I didn't mention is really a, a, a John Reschke who, you know, really, we didn't put him on the field enough. I need to give Tawan a little bit of a break and, and get John Reschke on the field because he was out for one series and, and went three and out when he was out there. So uh, that was impressive. We always tell guys when you get a chance to get out there and play, you got to go out and show up, and he, he did that, so he deserves more reps because of that. Secondary, you know, um, you know, people look at the big passes that we gave up last week and go, what happened? And, and you know, we were just a little short on some plays. And if you're short against uh, some very good players, you know, you're, you're going to give up big plays. But uh, Curtis Drummond was solid. You know, I know there's rumors uh, at the Oregon game that he messed up. But, you know, really, he, he played a winning performance against Oregon. R.J. Williamson, again, a guy that's continued to get better playing a lot of reps. Um, we've got to get Monte Nicholson some reps in there just to give him a break. And I think Monte Nicholson and Mark Meyer are two guys that, you know, as the season progresses, we're going to see more and more as we feel comfortable putting them in the game. You know, Trey Waynes uh, stumbled a little bit last Saturday, probably the first time I've seen him stumble since TCU. But, you know, overall, you know, Trey Waynes is, is, is a great corner for us, and we expect to get great corner play out of him. And then Darren Hicks, again, for a true sophomore, uh, has played very solid for us. Here's the snap. Jenkins winds up and throws right sideline. It is picked off at the 30-yard line of MSU by Darian Hicks. Um, you know, I think what you're going to expect from our defense as it goes on is we're going to make plays, um, and we're going to get better each and every weekend. We're not going to ever stay the same. We're going to continue to get better. Um, we've got some young football players that are taking the shoes of some, some good players that have graduated for us in the past, and, and every week they're going to get better.
Yeah, I think I got my first guitar when I was about nine years old. Growing up in Traverse City, a lot of people listened to country, and really, it was probably my older brother Max that got me into it, and I didn't really like it growing up when I was younger. Um, I didn't start liking it till probably high school. Um, but ever since then, you know, I've just fell in love with it, everything about country music. You know, everyone knows that I come from a football family. Um, that's pretty obvious, but you know, once I started getting into music, I just fell in love. And it's really been football and music ever since then. And uh, music is just a great outlet. You know, we're busy all the time with football and school. And if you have one thing to just, you know, take you away from all that, um, it's really important and for me, that's music. I took guitar lessons growing up for a few years, uh, but then I started playing piano at my friend's house and I fell in love with that, so I taught myself piano. And then from there, I taught myself drums. So, you know, guitar, piano, and drums are some things that I love to do in my free time. I started writing music probably when I was 10 years old. And uh, it's changed a little bit since then, obviously. But, um, you know, I write songs about what I know. So I don't try to be anything that I'm not. You know, this song, Boys From My Hometown. Um, another song that's called Senior Year. All these songs are you know, I'm talking about things that I've done, that we've done, so it's really easy for me. The first time I ever performed publicly was middle school, seventh grade, we did a talent show. And then up until this year, I haven't done much in public, it's all been private, but me and Evan Fisher played in the academic gala in the spring, and that was really the first time I played in front of a big audience, so that was a big thing for us, and it was a lot of fun. This is a song we wrote about six months ago, it's an original song, uh, it's called Over, so I hope you guys like it. Touching me. And uh, this summer I played in what's called the Showdown. It's a local music competition. My younger sister Holly entered me into the competition without me even knowing. And uh, it turns out they picked me for one of the eight finalists to go to the local um, Showdown. You know, we had a blast. I had a bunch of my teammates come up. A lot of my family was there. And uh, it was definitely a night to remember. I mean, we had so much fun, met some great people. And, you know, it's something that I hope I can do again maybe next year. Hopefully I'll be able to go to some open mics and, you know, keep playing in front of people. You know, I definitely see myself working in the music business when I'm older, hopefully. Maybe not necessarily as a performer, but maybe as a songwriter. That's what I really love to do. I love to write songs. And mainly because it's easy for me and it's fun for me. So I think if I can stick with that, that's my true passion. I think I'll enjoy whatever I do in the music uh, industry. The song I'm gonna play is called Boys From My Hometown. And you know, that was an easy song to write because I have so much to write about. I have so many memories of those guys from high school. And uh, so that's, it's really easy for me. And uh, that's really what keeps me writing, writing music is the love for country music and what it stands for and the people that are in the, in the industry. So, you know, that's been really fun for me and I'm, I'm so glad that I got into country. Always a song about a pretty red dress Loving on you when her hair's a mess I got a few things I won't say I sure like her with the windows down Getting real close when the stars come out I got some things that'll beat that I love sitting here holding you close But come on girl, all my good friends know you can't be tonight out of my trouble Talking about how good life was It's just us, but we stayed out all night long and all the memories we made back then I'm proud to call them my best friends Out on the boat and blaring them country songs We sure have some fun 
her around You can't beat the boys from my hometown Pull up the truck and put the tailgate down Me and my buddies used to run this town But times have changed and we're older now some people like to have a candlelit dinner with a girl from work just to go home with her, but I take a night outside with them. You can't be tonight out in my truck talking about how good life was. It's just us, but we stayed out all night long. And all the memories we made back then, I'm proud to call them. My best friends out on the boat and blaring them country songs. We sure have some fun. We're around.